Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. I'm Jack Jones. I invited Jack back in today. You guys have seen him in the top 20 drum intros of all time and the top 20 drum fills of all time. Good to be back. Today we're going to be talking about how sampling has affected modern drumming. When I did the video on the Jonas Brothers drum break, which was compared to Funky Drummer. That actually wasn't a very good comparison, was it, Jack? Right. What is the song that it's, it really mimics? Well, probably the origin of that, the Amen Break, or the, the break is from the song Amen, Amen Brother. Amen Brother, yeah, Amen from Brother. 1969. Actually recorded right here in Atlanta, Georgia, right, in the spring right, of 69. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, let's actually talk about how those two breaks differ from one another once you play them. Absolutely. Okay, Jack, those are obviously very similar. Right. One of the differences between them, though, is that the Amen break is played on the ride. Right. Whereas the Jonas Brothers played on the hi hat. Right. The snare accents are very similar right. between them. Yeah, and there's a there's a crucial accent that is is key in this. Okay. It's in the in the third bar, there's a displaced backbeat on the snare drum. What what drummers call as the displaced backbeat. So I'll show it to you in the Winston's groove. the Jonas Brothers uh, beat. Kind of the same thing. Okay, where does that come from though, Jack? That doesn't come from, obviously it doesn't even come from the Winstons. Where does that really originate? Yeah, that whole displaced backbeat thing goes all the way back to James Brown. Okay, so if you really speed that up, you're going into a different genre of, of drumming. Exactly, and that's the next piece of this, is when people started sampling that Amen break, they used it in different styles such as hip hop, um, but another one that was very influential was drum and bass, okay? Um, I can quickly demonstrate yeah. the Amen break sped up in more of a drum and bass feel. That would be done with a drum machine and with real drummers, both. Exactly. Well, it started out in drum and bass music. Uh, producers were just taking that break, chopping it up, displacing it. So it's really about four bars of music that they did all sorts of interesting things with. And it didn't necessarily make musical sense phrase-wise. Drummers, much later in the early 90s probably, drummers like Jojo Mayer, started duplicating what these producers were doing, which, you know, was very strange and sounds off kilter, and today it's kind of becoming commonplace. Let's check out Jojo Mayer. So where do you, where did that really originate? Who was another drummer that originated that style of mimicking drum machines? One of the first drummers that comes to mind for me is a guy I've heard here in town a few times, D. Anthony Parks. Not a lot of people know who he is, but he's kind of credited with being one of the first innovators to take this whole electronic movement and put it on the acoustic drums and rehumanize it. And he'll play keyboards. Yeah, he, he plays keys over here with his right hand playing all these kinds of sounds and stuff with his left hand. It's unbelievable. Let's check him out. So what are the artists that D'Anthony was actually Mimicking when he two was of the that. main artists were uh, Square Pusher and Aphex Twin. I'll 
I'll tell you a funny story. When I was living in New York City in the early 90s, I was going to this club and I said, who's playing today? Oh, it's it's a drum and bass band. I said, drum and bass? There's just a drummer and bass player playing? They're like, yeah, it's drum and bass. And I, I walk into the club, basement of this club, and uh, it was a drummer and bass player playing. So let's talk about hip hop, Jack. Who are some of the hip hop drummers that were influenced by uh, drum machines and and produce and people that program drums, like Jay Dilla, for example? Right, Jay Dilla, I think, is the one that's often quoted as being the most influential in this new style of drumming. Um, he created a style of programming in which he did not quantize his parts. So you would get some very interesting things happening time-wise in the groove. Bass drums, kind of a head, snare drums in the back. The, the sound was drunk is what you hear. It sounded kind of drunk. And then you had drummers like uh, like Questlove. Questlove yep. is probably the number one guy in the late 90s, early 2000s. His work with D'Angelo was really innovative in uh, duplicating that on the drums. Let's check that out. In the case of D'Angelo, like a song like Dream and Eyes of Mine, like I, that's the first time I ever heard like that whole... And when I asked Bob Power about that, I was like, yo, like, how, how did he make it sound so messed up? He's like, eh, because he didn't read the manual in the book. Like, <laughs> so, you know, but it, it, yeah. it, it had personality to it, so I just gravitated towards it. <laughs> As we were recording this last clip, we just saw the news that Neil Peart died. I just did a live stream with Jack, and I wanted to talk about it in this video because it's happened now as we're talking about drums. Right. And um, I wanted to mark the time that it happened. And um, it's uh, crushing. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a huge blow to me. Like many, many other drummers, um, Neil Peart growing up was a huge influence as a kid. Uh, I had his posters on the wall. I wrote him fan letters. I wanted his drum set, the whole number. Um, I, and you almost take him for granted. It's just one of, the, one of the great pillars of rock and roll drumming. So for him to be gone is just... It's unbelievable. Yeah. I have yet to process it, actually. So I wanted to just mark this in this video to remember Neil and talk about these things that we were discussing today about the how hip-hop drumming, drum programming, drum sampling right. has all changed the way the drummers play over the last 25 years, really. Right, absolutely. And love to know your thoughts. Leave them in the comments. Feel free to leave a comment about Neil as well. Thank you, Jack, for being here. Absolutely. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're a first-time viewer, remember to ring the bell. Thank you so much for watching.